Built to thrive in their environments, animal bodies offer winning designs and possible solutions to our own engineering challenges. After all, feathered wings inspired our metal ones. Sleek swimmers helped shape our boats. What other new solutions can be found by studying the forms of animals? I'm in Stuttgart, Germany at the Wilhelma Zoo. It might be the perfect place to see the future shape of technology, according to engineer Heinrich Franzek. So when an engineer like you comes to the zoo, yeah. do you see it differently from regular visitors? I think so, <laughs> because we want to get inspired by the nature. And here in the zoo, there's so concentrated, a huge variety of animals, all optimized for their applications. And we are thinking in applications, so this is a paradise for an engineer. Heinrich works for an automation company trying to improve one of the most important inventions of the 20th century, the robotic arm. It's been revolutionizing factories since the first one was introduced in 1961 at General Motors. But robotic arms have some problems. Just like the one on humans, the traditional robot arm consists of rigid parts joined together, often limiting its programmable motion. They're also dangerous. Get hit by one of these, and it's lights out. So robots often end up behind protective fences, unable to work closely with humans. The German automation company Heinrich works for, Festo, decided to reinvent the robotic arm, making it more flexible and less dangerous. Heinrich leads me to the source of the inspiration, and it turns out maybe the best arm is a nose. So why would you look at an elephant's trunk and think this would help you with automation? As you can see, it's so flexible and transmit a lot of force and makes it much more easier to handle things. And this is our business, handling things so to automate a factory or a process. It makes sense to look into nature um, and to get inspired by nature. And the elephant is an excellent ambassador for that. Thanks to Sela, a 47-year-old Asian elephant, I get a little first-hand experience with what an elephant packs in its trunk. A little elephant snot for you. <laughs> an elephant trunk is an impressive multi-tool, able to slurp up water. Now she collects the water. Wow! And squirt it. Breakfast is on. It picks up food like a vacuum cleaner. Manipulates objects, and it's strong. Sella can use her trunk to lift over 400 pounds. No, no, that's my wrist. She could crush me like a bug, couldn't yes, she? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> Here, have some more peanuts. But the trunk's most impressive attribute is its amazing flexibility. It comes from having no bones and about 40,000 muscles arranged lengthwise and in rings. With no bones and no joints, it's about as far away from a traditional robotic arm as you can get. I head to Festo's headquarters in nearby Esslingen to see their version of the elephant trunk. They call it a bionic handling assistant. Now this looks like a bionic handling assistant. Yeah, you're <laughs> absolutely right. This is our trunk. Festo's version of the trunk is made of plastic with a series of air chambers inside. Filling different parts with compressed air causes it to bend. So if I want it to bend that way. We need a tube with compressed air for this expansion. And then you get this bending um, to the other end. So this blows up like a balloon. Yes, for sure. They're testing the assistant with this simple motion for use in a packaging operation. Look at that, it tucks it in nicely. Well done, Dumbo. But it is inherently more flexible than a conventional arm, and just as important, far safer. We don't have uh, electricity, we don't have steel and iron and all these masses which could damage a person. It's a weight of uh, five pounds. Uh, uh, some valves, a little uh, uh, control system. 
So there's really nothing here but plastic tubes and air. Yeah. Does it do tricks? <laughs> <laughs> In this application, the tip of the trunk works by suction. But Festo has experimented with what it calls a fin gripper, inspired by fish fins. If you push on the middle of a tail fin, it doesn't curl away from you, as you might expect. It curls toward you, giving a fish much more efficient strokes. But Festo has built that principle into a gripper that curls around the object it needs to pick up, adapting to the shape. So it looks to me like you're about to demonstrate how this might work. Yes, we have two different gripping devices, one with a fish tail, and this is a traditional one the robots are using. Okay, can I see these things close? Sure. Same pressure, everything is equal. Now, we will see what happens. This is the old method, and this is the bioengineered method. <laughs> okay, let the competition begin. Look at that. Traditional robot hand, shattered to smithereens, and the fishtail gripper <laughs> really did its job. So you have Robot Zero, Fishtail One. You've stolen from nature and done a great job. Thank, Thank you very much. Oh. I'll edit all this out. Combining the fin gripper with the elephant trunk produces a flexible, lightweight, and safe robotic arm, ready for all sorts of applications. Oh, here it goes. Biomimicry, nowadays, it's part of the design process here at Festor. Cross thinking, get inspired by nature, and to transform these ideas into industrial applications. May I? Thank you. Festo's handling assistant steals its form from the elephant trunk. But Festo isn't alone in adapting designs found in nature and applying them to industry. The beak of the kingfisher bird breaks the water with very little resistance, inspiring the shape of this Japanese bullet train so it would cut efficiently through the air. The shape of the yellow boxfish provides a rigid structure and has very little drag for such a large volume. All reasons Mercedes-Benz used it for the design of a high-efficiency concept car. But making machines that look like animals is one thing. What about making machines that move like them? <laughs> 